Simply Peach. This is not a sponsor. I was just thirsty. All right, guys, I'm on a roll, believe it or not. See, I usually record these videos well. I won't say I'm on a roll unless you see this today on the 1st of January 2019. And it's uh, 11.30, so you may not see it on the 1st of January 2019 unless I just do it about 10 minutes and put it up now. What time is it? It's 11.29, so maybe it will be on the 2nd of January, but at least I am beginning to record it on the 1st of January. So let me get right into it, guys. I never, I guess for a long time, the longest time, 20, maybe 30 years, I like to say the positive thing. So, and then even my friend, he hit me to this seven years ago. Instead of saying, two, what is it? Killing two birds with one stone, he likes to say feeding two birds with one seed. Now that's a little bit, a stretch more than I used to do. But I always like to say the positive thing. So if someone has said 10 ways to kill your business, I would like to say 10 ways to keep your business alive, which I say that on here. Advertise to keep your business alive. Matter of fact, I'll throw that out. That's number one, which is number 10 on my list, but it's number one. Not advertising is going to kill your business. But anyway, so for years, I like to say the positive side or the positive version of whatever it is. But I just got to be watching a video today, earlier this morning, on the 1st of January, 2019, and it was called Failures. And the video was incredible. It was like a 30 minute video, like a, a, a sitcom or something, <laughs> like a, you know, a movie. You know what I mean, a half an hour movie. And uh, I really liked it. And it said, people want to see fail. People want to see failures. And that's why you see a lot of videos that say fails and Look what so-and-so did, he did this, oh, he smoked this, oh, he crashed this. And everybody's looking for someone's failure. Everybody's looking for someone's demise. They want to see what's going on. What did, may, I may cut that out. I may not. Anyway, let's get to my list, guys. These are my fails in business. My failures in business, not just the last year, 2018, not just the last year before that, 2017, but throughout the lifetime of my business or my various businesses, I've had these failures. Uh, this is just a small list, but it's a major list of something that I've had uh, definitely in the last seven to ten years since I've been in this, since we've been in this major digital age. And before that, when I did uh, whatever I did, cutting grass or uh, painting walls or whatever I did, I've had these fails in my lifetime. So today I'm going to talk about my fails in business. Now, I won't be doing this a lot because, again, I like to stay on the positive side. I'd rather tell you what is going to be the positive version of your fail. So what are my successes? That's what I probably will do most of the year. I'll say I did this, I'll hurry up and jump back, jump back to the successes. But today I am going to focus on my fail, so let me get into it. It's been four minutes already, so we know this video is going long, so if you're with me, you're with me. If you're not, you're not. I appreciate you. It's Greg Reese in business. Let's go with number 10, which is number one on my list today. So not advertising. On most of my businesses, I've never really advertised. I've never taken the time to say, here's some cash. And I've done it, I've done it before, because I've placed ads. I used to try to do mail order. Um, notice I said try, I wasn't very successful. Uh, I've done, I actually sold ads, and, you know, but I never really placed ads. And I never said, here's money, most of the time, advertise this product and watch it sell. I haven't done that and that was a fail because I do believe that you should advertise to keep your business alive but I wanted them to advertise with me so I would get the money on my publication but I didn't advertise my publication so go figure so number two on my list today which is number one on my list is procrastination man I have so many stories about me and procrastination 
and that's how my business has failed along the way. Uh, one story that sticks out in my mind is the Christmas shake video. Let's put it that way. Well, let's start with the Obama video, the Obama rap video. Somebody was selling, selling iTunes or MP3s when my Obama rap came out on video and went on CNN. But I didn't find out how to do it until later in the year. So when my video was at its peak, it, it might not have even been at its peak, but when it was at its peak on TV, let's put it that way, when it was on CNN and International, CNN and International, uh, and all these various places, uh, broadcast TV, there was nowhere, nowhere to download the song. And that was a fail. I procrastinated. I could have found out, where do you do this? Oh, I'll get it, I'll get it, I'll get it, I'll figure it out, we'll do it, and I never did it until like September or something, and then uh, I didn't advertise. So, I mean, we, we may have sold a few, 30, 40, 50 bucks, but just imagine as many hits as that song and that series received, who knows? We would have a different story now if I had sold that MP3. Now, was it mastered, mixed and everything? No, it wasn't. But it was a novelty song and it was exciting. And I'll tell you one more uh, procrastination and I'll take it again back to about 10 years ago, uh, The Christmas Shake. I, I have had this song, The Christmas Shake. I wanted to do something about Christmas, silly, and uh, I procrastinated, procrastinated. I think it was like the 21st of set, uh, December, me and my friend, we recorded this video, and it was a hit. Everybody liked it, but we recorded it on the 21st of December. So I procrastinated, and if I would have recorded it the 1st of Dece December, again, it could have been a major hit. We could have sold, we could have put it on iTunes, because by that time, two years later, or a year, a year later, actually, um, I knew how to get music on iTunes and Google Play and stuff like that. But again, procrastination, it stopped my business, or it didn't stop my business, but it slowed it down, and it, it slowed down which might, what might have been wealth for me. You know, if not wealth, at least cash income, um, cash flow. So here we go. Number two, telling people to do things to help them succeed, but I won't do the same thing. Here's my example. I'm living my example right now. I always tell all my friends, ask them. All, everybody I've met since I've been on TV in, 20, in 2008, Oh, guys, you got to do a video. You got to do a video every day. You got to do this. You got to do that. But I don't do a video every day. You know, I don't talk about the 10 things I like to do. I don't talk about my 10 fails in my life, in my business. I don't do that, but I tell people to do it. Ask them, any of them, everybody that I've came across that we've worked more than one day. Oh, you got to do videos. Oh, you got to speak every day. You got to talk to your crowd. And I don't do it. So... Me telling people to do things to help them succeed, and I don't do those same things. So that is a fail. Fail. So I gotta get out of that. How about I just don't even tell them, I'll do it myself. And that's what I'm gonna do now. So number three, underestimate times that it takes to complete a task. Boy, I'm notorious with that. That's me all day. Oh, I can get it done in an hour. I may be able to, but I should say two, maybe. Maybe I should say three. Oh man, I can get this done in 10 minutes. I may be able to, but I probably should say an hour. I'll say it takes this long because if something happens, if my computer slows up or electricity goes out or if I get hungry or if I want to get up or whatever, I have to use the bathroom. I mean, that 10 minutes could take an hour. And someone was expecting it in 10 minutes, and then they won't receive it until an hour and a half. Number four, define my goals to make them easy, easier to accomplish. Yeah. So many ways, ways I can go with that. So what's my goal when I do portraits? Do I wanna have 50? Sell them for $50, do I want to do 10 a week? Do I want to do 20 a week? 
because I need to make X amount of dollars. So those are some of the goals that I need to define. Yeah, I like that better. So let's get going. Okay, number five, prices too low slash letting customers define how much I charge. Boy, I tell you what, it was one time. She said, Greg will do it for gas money. Gas money? I was doing it for gas money for you. But Greg would do it for gas money. So my prices were too low. And I let the people dictate what I charge them. Oh, I like you. I'm going to charge you this. Oh, don't worry about it. Just get me there. Oh, you had to buy Susie some shoes today? It's okay. Oh, you, this ha your car broke down? But see, that took away from my business. It's my heart. But business is not about that type of heart. Because you lose. That's a fail for me. So, number six. Being realistic about my budget. Being realistic about how much I spend, how much money it takes for me to do something. I used to do a lot of printing in, in nightlife situations. And I'd say, oh man, it cost me X amount to print. Also, oh, I'll charge X amount. But I didn't think about doing this and doing that and adding this and adding that and driving to get it and driving to get that. And when it comes down to it, I charge that well, a certain amount and then I broke even when I should have charged another amount higher, higher. And I would have made a profit. Number seven, these are my fails. If they apply to you, that's good. If they apply to you, that's good. You learn from them. If they don't apply, apply to you, that's great. If you are successful in business, maybe you don't need these. Maybe you need to look at them again and maybe you could teach someone else. Maybe. Number seven, give too much free. <laughs> give us free. <laughs> All right, guys. No, I'm serious. I give too much for free. Products, services, time, effort, thought process, free thinking. I give it for free, but I love it. I love it. I love giving things for free. You know, I used to say this. If I had a $100,000 car, Nine other people are going to have $10,000 cars. And what that means is I'll sell my $100,000 car. I'll keep a $10,000 car. And I'll give nine, thousand, nine people $10,000 cars. Now, I still want to do that. But that's just, it's in my thought process. It's in my whole psyche because I don't have a $100,000 car right now. But I still want to, want to give free. I want to give free. And I know they, I know a lot of people say you give what you get. And you reap and you sow. And, and I believe that. But if you haven't built your business yet, why would you continue to give and take away from what you're building? Those are my fails. So we're getting lengthy here, guys. So if you're still with me, I love it. If you are still with me, I love it. Number eight, letting customers dictate how you do business. First, you let them dictate how much you're gonna charge a business, then you let them dictate how you do business. You can't set up here. You can't put your camera here, or you can't do this, or you can't do that. Well, then I can't get the best shot, you know? You have to let and this, this goes with me because I, I do mostly with photography and videography. You're not going to get the best shot. If you say, I have to stand in this corner, or I can't use flash, or that light is too bright, or I can't use your outlets, 
you know, we're going to lose something. So that's, that's just one little step on about letting them dictate how you do business because there's so, so many different ways that you could do go with that. But let's just go with that one right there. Number nine, depending on others, and this is critical, depending on others to help me build my business. It's my business. Most of the time they may not even care about that. So how could I depend on them to help me build my business? I shouldn't do it, I do it. Hey, it's this, it's that, we're a team, let's get it done. And that's where you fail, because you wait. You wait, you wait, and you may do a part, and it can happen with teammates, it can happen with partners, you may do your part, and that part may not be done. Or it could be vice versa. They may do that part, and your part could not be done. But since I'm talking about me and my fails, that's where I failed, failed letting other people, or depending on other people, to do my business and succeed, give me cash flow. And, and they're my dreams. They may not want to see my dreams come true like I do. They may want to see them succeed or flourish, but maybe I want something here. Maybe they just want it there. There you go. So here we go. Number one, procrastination, plain and simple. Number two, telling people to do things to help themselves succeed, but I won't do the same thing to help me succeed. Number three, underestimate the time it takes to complete a task. Number four, define my goals, make them easier to accomplish. Number five, keep my prices too low and let people dictate what I charge them because of their life situations. Number six, being realistic about budget or money I have to spend to complete a task or a pro project or a service or a product, make a product. Number seven, I give too many products and services for free. Number eight, letting customers dictate how I do my business. You should do that, you should do this. Oh, you can't sit here, you can't sit there. Don't use this light, don't use that plug. Number nine, depending on others to build my dream. Depending on others to help make my income. And number 10, not advertising. So there you go, guys. There are my 10 business fails.